I think we'll kick things off with my first daily vlog uh, by focusing on Tesla. Right, so this morning what we're going to do is uh, I have to take Jasper off to get a, a new digger tractor. He's been saving up for one. Uh, but once I've done that, um, we're going to look at Tesla destination chargers in the UK. They've been in the US for ages, but uh, there haven't been any destination chargers officially in the UK, so Tesla destination chargers. Um, and then yesterday I got an email and a software update. And what they basically did was add destination chargers to the map in the car. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Sort of helps out on those sort of longer, the longer road trips. More on that in a bit. Jasper? Yes. Yes. Yeah, come get your money, Ten. I just wanted to quickly relay something that happened when we got into the car. This screen was completely off. I sat in the seat, the dash came on, but that big screen didn't change at all. It just stayed off. And I think that's because it had an update yesterday and sometimes it does like to be reset before it uh, wants to sort of play ball. And I think that's the thing to remember with Teslas at any rate, is it's basically like an iPad with wheels. And, you know, like any other computer system, sometimes they go a little nuts. And the solution is to, uh, is to reset it. So I thought we'd just quickly cover how you do that. And how you do that is, if I zoom out, this is never gonna work. You have to put your thumbs on both of these wheels on the side here and just hold them down. And then that screen resets itself. And after I did that, all was well with the world. Um, and I think that's that's the thing, you know, like with any computer, every now and again you have to reset it. And it is the same with Teslas, because they are basically computers with wheels. But it's worth knowing about anyway. So while we're here, let's have a quick look at the new chargers they've added. You see you've got the superchargers there. And then here you've got the destination chargers. It's quite handy having a, a new bunch of chargers um, available on the map. And it's sort of pan-European, so yeah, very cool. Probably more useful for when you're going on a road trip and you want to stay somewhere overnight. Yeah, that's probably the sort of the, the primary use because it's nice to know that there's an available charger somewhere you're staying and superchargers are rubbish overnight because you've got to plug them in and then half an hour later remember to go and move them so you're not sort of inconveniencing anyone else. Whereas with a... Uh, destination charger you can you're supposed to leave it plugged in overnight or well, the valet moves it depending on the hotel see that's the thing about chargers you need the right kind of charger for the job that you've got to do for it so for example if you are staying somewhere for eight hours it doesn't actually make any difference whatsoever if the charger takes eight hours to finish charging your car or just 20 minutes it's totally irrelevant. The point is that it needs to be charged when you want to go again in eight hours. And that's, I think, where um, a lot of the sort of policy makers to do with EV charging get it wrong. In that most of them have never owned an EV and they've never tried to live with an EV day to day. So they don't actually have any real idea as to what an EV driver wants or doesn't want from a charging system. My favorite example of that is the uh, 
Chatamo DC quick charger in the car park at the O2 in East London, the O2 arena. It's hilarious. It's a quick charger. It charges your car to 80% in half an hour or something if you're in a sand leaf. And yet it's inside of a car park where you have to pay a minimum of 12 pounds to park, I think, something in that, in that area. Um, I mean, it, who is gonna go to the O2 for half an hour and pay 12 pounds to park there to charge their car? Nobody. And to add insult to injury, right next to the quick charger are two slow charger posts. So, just doesn't make any sense. Well, not to me anyway. And that charger probably cost about 50, 60 thousand pounds to install when it was first installed, sort of three or four years ago. It's crazy, really. And this is one of the reasons I would always advise people to trust Tesla when it comes to electric cars. They seem to, they're not making electric cars because they have to or because that's the way the market's going and they feel like if they don't jump on the bandwagon, they're gonna lose out. That's, it's got nothing to do with that for Tesla. They make electric cars because they want to make electric cars. And so consequently, they want to do the best job they can by their owners, which is why they're constantly working to expand the charging network, both the superchargers and now the destination chargers as well. Because every time they can make the ownership experience just a little bit better they increase their potential market size they help to um, push evs forwards and move us to a sort of sustainable transport future and that's that's why i like them as a company and why i think owning one of their cars is the best decision that anyone who wants to drive electric will ever make I can't believe I decided to do daily vlogs. I must be crazy.